For just a few hours, the Minneapolis City Council is expected to weigh in on the police department's new contract. If approved, this new contract would make MPD one of the highest paying departments in the state. Not the highest, but one of the highest. This morning, we're joined by MPD Chief Brian O'Hara. Brian, nice to have you here. I should Thank say Chief O'Hara. Yeah. Uh, we've been chatting, and uh, sorry, I feel like I already know you. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about this. Uh, what, what does this deal mean for the department, and what does it mean for the force? Well, this contract's incredibly important. The officers have been working uh, without a contract since December of 22. Um, and that's a big deal for our officers, and it's a big deal uh, for people who are looking to come to the department. Um, the reality is the department is depleted. Uh, we've lost hundreds of officers over the last few years, but we are turning a corner now. Um, our officers have worked extremely hard uh, to both fight uh, a lot of crime and violence that's been happening, and they have been loyal to the residents of the city. Uh, and I think we owe it to our officers uh, to ensure that they have a contract that reflects, you know, pay and benefits that's commensurate with the challenges of the job, the trauma that you endure while doing this job, um, as well as, you know, kind of the level of service that people in the city want. Right, a, a difficult job mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Uh, so looking ahead, what do you, this mean? What does this mean for recruitment efforts and yeah. also? what it means for you know keeping veteran officers with the department sure. because i think that's you know along with holding on to them you want to bring in new uh officers as yeah. well the veteran officers that are here are incredibly dedicated to the residents of this city they have given decades upon decades of their lives and they are still out there every day riding around in black and white cars responding to calls for help from members of our community um, so they deserve to be recognized for that um, you know, it's it's incredibly important that this contract go through um, because these members who have stayed here have not turned their backs on the residents of our communities. Uh, and we need to send a strong message that city leadership is not turning their backs on these officers either. Uh, likewise, I think it's important we have to recognize that today it's so challenging to fill law enforcement positions anywhere in the country, especially in Minnesota. Um, and so if we want people to come to the most scrutinized police department in America uh, under conditions where are extremely challenging to work uh, and we want them to perform with near perfection every time, we have to have salary that, that reflects the quality of work that we expect from our members. There are some uh, critics of this contract uh, who say that this contract does not do enough to hold officers accountable. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you respond to that? Well, two things. One. I was hired to reform the Minneapolis Police Department. That's my job. Uh, and I'm going to ensure that we continue to do that going forward. And it's my responsibility to make sure that our officers perform better and better and build trust with members of our community while we're reducing serious crime. The second part of it uh, is the disciplinary process, the problems that it has, both that officers see as problems with the disciplinary process, are virtually the same that members of the community have criticized the disciplinary process here. It simply takes too long. It doesn't mean that we necessarily need, you know, extreme penalties when somebody makes a mistake but we need to be able to have discipline relatively close in time to when bad behavior occurs. And that's got nothing to do with the process. That's structural issues that are completely outside the contract. I think the contract has been used at times as an excuse, uh, you know, to not, you know, have accountability, not have reforms. I'm the person that's responsible for getting that done. I will not use this contract as an excuse for not doing my job. And if the contract doesn't get approved, what what would that mean for the department? It looks like it's heading that direction, but what if it doesn't? What does that mean? Well, um, you know, I think ultimately things would work out. Once it goes back to the Bureau of Mediation Services and arbitration, I think things would ultimately work out. The problem is that sends a terrible message both to the members of the department who have been loyal to the residents of the city in the most challenging times uh, in, in modern policing as well as to people who are thinking about possibly coming here. You know, we have turned things around. This is going to be the first time in years where we're going to beat the rate of attrition. We're on, pa we're on pace right now to hire more sworn members this year than we are losing them. Uh, not by much, but we're turning it around. We're not going to get smaller anymore. Um, I think this risks a lot of the progress that has been made, um, you know, just by sending a bad message that uh, city leadership does not support the police here. We know you have a busy morning. The vote's coming up at 9.30 this morning at City Council. Thanks for stopping by. Thank Chief. you so much for having me. Our pleasure. Chief O'Hare. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thanks so much. And, we'll, of course, keep you updated on what happens at that meeting.